All right, thank you, Megan. Hey, June is Men's Health Month, uh, month and this morning we're tackling uh, prostate health. Dr. Alan McCool is a board-certified urologist from Walker Baptist Medical Center. He joins us this morning to take your questions. So the number to call, 741-9272, if you have a question for the doctor. Good to see you this morning, Doc. Thanks for having me. Hey, I do want to ask you about this. I mean, uh, you know, prostate uh, cancer, we know that is, uh, I believe, the leading uh, cause of uh, cancer in, in men. Correct. And so um, it's something we do need to get checked for sure. But people don't realize that it's something that can actually happen pretty early so you need to start getting it checked earlier than most people think right that's right it's um, we recommend for most men without a family history to begin at age 50 okay if you're a white man if you're african-american we uh, suggest 45 and the reason that's important is if you have routine follow-up like you're supposed to with mm -hmm. a PSA that's a blood test we use for prostate cancer right. and uh, a digital rectal exam if we find prostate cancer in someone who's been followed routinely the survival is 100% Wow, that's, that's good. always that's cured. encouraging. Correct. All right, so we, what are the early symptoms for somebody who's having some prostate issues, and then maybe some things they can do to help you know alleviate the problem? Sure. Well, to prevent, just like all health problems, but prostate issues as well, is healthy diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. But the early symptoms we see are getting up frequently at night. Uh, that's called nocturia. Getting up three, four times uh, per night to avoid hesitancy, decreased force of stream, mm -hmm. uh, urinary tract infections, feelings of incomplete emptying your bladder. Okay. Now, are there, are there some cause and effect re research that has been done to show that there's something you can also do to prevent it, or is it only drugs that can help that out? Well, prevention, again, it's diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. Low-fat diet, um, just like, you know, diabetes and hypertension, it actually, the same things affect the prostate as well. Um, other things can give you symptoms, like high caffeine can make it uh, more difficult to avoid often. Because <clears throat> I know there, there are obviously some, uh, some drugs out there, I shouldn't call them drugs, they're actually over-the-counter things you can buy, herbal supplements and that type thing. The FDA has not looked over those, so you know what do we know about like soft palmetto sure. and some of those ingredients that that's the one that has been studied mm -hmm. um, it's not approved by the FDA but there is good research that shows that so, salt palmetto at high doses does alleviate prostate symptoms okay again it's seven four one nine two seven two if you have a question uh, about your prostate health or anything related to urology but uh, uh, you know we, we, we the old exam when guys think about the exam they're going to the family practitioner is not a fun thing but again the PSA blood test is a new thing um, that they can get done and they can really detect things early right it does and, and just because you have a high PSA doesn't mean you have prostate cancer it's actually number three or four on the list uh, some people make more PSA uh, PSA is not perfect, but it's the best we have, but it does go along with the exam as well, so you need both. Now, if you do have a family history, how often should you get checked? Well, you need to start earlier, um, and really it's still once a, once a year, but if you have a family history, you're about eight times uh, more at a risk uh, for having prostate cancer. But again, it's still curable when called early. Oh, well, that's, that's the key right there. Uh, does, Suzanne, I'm, I'm not sure if we, uh, I missed you right there. Did we get a call right there? Okay, if not, she may be trying to answer the phones right so, I'm sorry, say it again, 7419272. Uh, if we, all right, here he is. I thought that what we heard there. Fred from Birmingham is calling in. Fred, good morning to you. Good morning. And what's your question for Dr. McCool? My, my, my question is that uh, I had prostate cancer, and I took the, uh, I have a prostate taken out. But uh, the problem that I'm having is I still have a leakage and so forth. And I just want to know if that's natural or uh, did you end up at night and so forth? Or what, I mean, what? I did check it out or something. Did you catch so, that? I, I did. So he's basically, he had prostate cancer. He's had it removed. Mm -hmm. Well, when yeah. we were, when we when we have prostate cancer, we have three goals. Number one is to remove the cancer, cure the patient. Number two is to prevent urinary incontinence, and number three is to preserve erectile function. Um, okay. But uh, the way the way we operate now, we typically do it laparoscopically or robotically. Uh, incontinence rates are quite low, um, typically less than 10%. Uh, but we have several new treatments now where uh, I can't think of a time when we haven't been able to get a patient completely dry or continent after prostate surgery. So there is there is treatment for you for sure. Yeah, but like I said, I've been up there. Like All right, Fred. Yeah. I hope that helps. Uh, best of luck to you. Hope you get better there. All right. I think next we on the line we have Robert calling in. Robert, good morning. Yes, I'm taking. Uh, uh, you know, I get up at night six, you know, six or seven times during the night, and I'm taking Flomax to stop that, and it has stopped it. And I'm getting up like a couple of times a night. Now he's giving me, my doctor's giving me Proscar to shrink my prostate. You know, he said it would take about four or five months to do that, or maybe six months to shrink my prostate. Now, how do you feel about that? 
No, I, I agree with that. The, the Flomax you're taking is an immediate fix, and it, it works differently than the Proscar, and the Proscar does take about uh, six months to work. But one thing about Proscar, you need to understand that it artificially lowers your PSA. So if you have a PSA level that's one, you need to double it if you're on Proscar. But no, I, I agree with both of those treatments. <laughs> All right, well, I haven't got anything to worry about my... Uh... I don't know if we did. Robert, did you go ahead? I think we lost Robert there. I apologize. Uh, Robert, thank you for the call. Thank you for all the calls. And Dr. McCool, appreciate your time, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, men, go get it checked out. JJ's up next.